healing warriors and healers. Today I wanted to show you some chest openers to help for easier, better breathing. Thanks for joining me. My name is Deborah Rogers, Holistic Occupational Therapist. All right, you guys, so what happens a lot of times, whether you're in bed a lot or just really short of breath and feel like you just can't, our lungs feel tight, is that our chest also can get very tight. And you have something called fascia, which is like cling wrap that wraps around the muscles. So the fascia, the muscles in our chest, even in our shoulders and our arms, can get very tight, even our neck. And when we open this up, it feels just easier to breathe sometimes. All right, so I'd love to teach you some um, different chest openers. So what you're gonna need is if you have a ball, such as a tennis ball, and if you have, it could be a yoga mat, it could be um, a foam roller, like what I have here, or just get two blankets and you're gonna roll them up the long way because we're gonna be lying on it. Okay, so hopefully you can see this, okay? What I did is I took um, two blankets and I rolled them up the long way. I like to be, because we're gonna be lying down, putting our back on this. I propped it up to show you that if you want to prop it up and have more of a recline position, it's easier to breathe. I have actually two pillows that I'm propped it up on, all right? So you could actually do this in bed if that's easier than getting on the floor. Um, I actually prefer using the foam roller, so I'm gonna show you the how I do it on the foam roller. But I just wanted to give you an idea of how you can do it. If you could use a yoga mat, if you don't have that, just take a, take a comforter, two comforters or blankets, and just roll them up the long way so you can have your spine lying on this. And then you can all, you can have flat on the, be flat on the floor, or you can just prop yourself. All right, so once you have um, it set up however you're gonna do, whether it's on the bed or on the floor using maybe a foam roller, or you've rolled up some, even towels you can roll up, or you've rolled up some blankets. Even a, the noodles that you use for the pools, you can try to put one or two of those, put two of those together. Maybe put some uh, elastics around so it stays together. All right, it's just being creative. So when you're ready to get on, you're gonna go on your side, and then you're just gonna roll over. Feet planted on the floor, knees bent. And I like to have my entire spine from my head Actually, all the way down to my tailbone supported. That's what's comfortable for me. Especially if there's any back issues, I like to have, people have back issues, I like to have that spine fully supported. And all of you're going to do is bring your arms out to the side, or I like to bring, okay, bring them out to the side. I have mine about a 90 degree angle. You do what's comfortable for you. I use this position to stretch a lot because it's a wonderful, wonderful chest opener. If it's too difficult for your arms, though, to go right on the floor, you want to be in a relaxed position, as relaxed as possible. You don't want to be overstretching. So you take a pillow or a block, and you can put it right under your arm so your arm has support. It could be the upper arm, down lower for the lower arm. That actually feels nice and comfortable. So whatever works best for you. And then you're just going to rest. This is about restorative pose. Restorative means where you're just relaxing into the pose. Relaxing into your body, deepening into your body. Allowing your body just to get heavier, heavier. And then just focusing on that four, six, four inhalation, the pause, and then the six or exhalation through the nose or the mouth and you can even do eight for an exhalation count if that's better okay breathe it in pause breathing out focusing on that diaphragmatic breathing breathing in pause Breathing out. I find this position is so much easier for me to breathe. Now, it, you'd want to make sure you're not arching your back too much. Come. Okay. You want to have a neutral spine so you can rock your pelvis back and find neutral. And also, you don't want your rib cage pointing up too much and then that's arching right here. So if you feel like you're doing that, gently take that, the front rib cage, even with your fingers, you can just help glide it back to your back rib cage. So your back is really, you're really feeling 
whatever you're resting on on your back. Okay. And what happens is we get so tight trying to breathe or being in bed too much and just not being as active. So it's really just opening all of this up. This is wonderful for people who also have neck pain because people who have neck pain tend also if they have neck tightness and tightness here. So everything's connected, the fascia, the muscles. So it's helping to really open up this whole frontal part of us. Now let's take another breath together, breathing in. Pause. Breathing out. Just noticing where your breath goes. I feel it was able to get so much higher up in me. I'm able to expand my lungs and my rib cage more. Now, if you have that tennis ball, take the tennis ball, and you're just going to do a little massage for yourself, a little myofascial work. You're just going to put it right under your collarbone, and you're just going to roll it around. Little circles, or you can go back and forth. You don't want to go too hard. You can even... Like just hold it and make circles like that. Just be careful. You don't want to be bruising yourself. You want to be gentle with yourself. It's easy to feel a knot and like, oh, I'm going to dig that out. But that's not what this is about. We're being kind and nurturing to our body. Our body's already been through a lot. This can go up and down, even the shoulder area, from the shoulder. And then you can even go up and down your sternum. Not right on the sternum, but right on the sides of the sternum. Now, what we're really trying to do is just help release that pectoralis major muscle in the fascia around here so we can get a little bit more of an opening. You can even go off to the side, right, right close to your armpit. And then you can go to the other side. You, you know, when you have time on your own, just experiment what feels good, where it feels good what the pressure works best for you. And then when you're done, you can place the ball down and stretching your arms out again and just noticing if there's a difference. As you breathe, just noticing where your breath goes. Perhaps even noticing if you're more aware of a certain part of your body. Also make sure that your chin's a little tucked. You don't want to be overextending your neck. And you're just not even focusing too hard in this position. Just let your body breathe. So much we're focusing on breathing. Can we let go of that in this moment and just allow our body to breathe as we're in this great position for easier breathing, more opened breathing. Okay, how about we take one more breath? And exhaling. And then as you want to get up, you're just going to roll to the side. Okay? Okay, for our next position, you can grab your blanket. Okay, you're going to fold it in half length lengthwise. And then roll the folded side over one or two more times. Okay. All right, so it looks like this. Okay, and then you're going to lie in the blanket just as we just lied down before. And if you need a pillow, that's fine. But we're going to place the blanket roll along the lower edge of our shoulder blades. So your head's going to rest on the un you're going to rest your head on either a pillow that's going to be at the top or you can use the foam block and you're going to place it at the top. So it'll give you a nice chest and shoulder opening also. And it could be, it might feel a little less intense than the one that we just did. Right, so we're going to get on it. Make 
make sure your necks, <coughs> your head and neck aren't too high, then good alignment. Okay, and I actually feel like I can even fold this over again. Because you want to feel that, you really want to feel that stretch in the neck and shoulder, I mean, not the, well, the neck too, but the shoulders and the chest. So that looks a little better to me. So it's almost like the, this part of your body is going to be up on the blanket, your head on the block, and then your back is kind of, your lower back is going to be on the floor. All right. So you can either come down that way or get on your side and then just roll over. This is also something that you can do in bed too. Okay. And then you just bring your arms out to the side. And again, this is a nice restorative pose that you can stay in for five or 10 minutes. You can actually, if you want it more relaxing, you might feel like you just have your knees fall together and kind of rest on each other for support so you're not holding them up. Some people that like to bring their legs out like this. So you're getting like an opening in both at the lower body and the upper body. And just breathing. If you don't feel like you're getting enough of a stretch, you might kind of want to double up on your blankets to get a little higher. You can have your arms or whatever feels comfortable for you. And then just breathing, noticing where the breath goes versus the pose before versus this pose. Maybe even noticing, breathe, practice breathing before you get in the pose and then get in the pose and notice the difference. This tends to really help me achieve more of a complete full breath getting into all of my body, all of my lungs. And again, this is also a great pose if you feel like you have anxiety and you just need a really nice restorative pose that you can just be, drop into, relax into. You know, it, there is also a saying that it, seven minutes it takes for the nervous system to drop back down to being calmer. That's why the pose of Shavasana poses at the end of a yoga class can take a little while. They should, I was, when, during my yoga teacher training, we were told to leave somebody in that pose at the end, also known as the corpse pose, for seven minutes because it takes that long for the body to be able to like, start calming itself. So perhaps seven minutes is, is a, that's a, the key number for you. We're not going to stay in that pose this long in this video, but... I encourage you to try it. So here your ribcage will be, you know, out a little more than the other pose. But again, you can try to drop that front ribcage down a little more if you feel like you're arching your back too much. And when you're ready to come out, you just turn on your side. Pause for a minute and readjust to that position before coming up. And then you come up, okay? Every time I do these poses, I feel like it's just easier to breathe. <laughs> so I'd like to show you how to do a chest stretch standing up. So if it's hard to lie down and do a chest stretch, this is great, just do it in the doorway. Take your arm, you try to come at a 90 degree angle if you can. And then you're just gonna slightly turn and look to the opposite direction. And you can feel that stretch all along here. If you're in a doorway, you can do it with both, both arms like this at once, or you can do it one at a time. Because you also, you want to be focused on the stretch, but you also really want to be focused on that breathing and being able to really breathe up into the whole, getting that full breath up into your, your rib cage, expanding your rib cage, and expanding your lungs. You can stay in here about 
30 seconds to 60 seconds. I usually like to stay a minute, sometimes longer, because it feels good. And I'll show you from the opposite position. This is what it looks like. This, and then turning. So that's what the back view is. If that's too much, what you can do is just slide your arm down, and then feet parallel, and then you just look over and you rotate slightly. And you still feel that stretch. A little more, that stretch is a little more in the anterior shoulder, but you also gain the chest stretch too. And you play around with the position, what feels right to you, what feels best. You don't want to be causing pain. So I'm sliding my arm down and I'm just, I'm just rotating, twisting to the opposite side. And remember the belly breathing, the diaphragmatic breathing. And then coming out of that position. All right? So, all right. So the next thing we're going to do is grab a tennis ball. Or if you have a little ball, like a, I've been using my daughter's little basketball, um, little foam ball. And what you're going to do is we're going to try to open up the lats. You're just going to put it right on the side. And you're going to just go around like this. Just noticing in your tender spots. The nice thing about this foam ball, it's not hard. You, you don't really want to be digging in so much, but a tennis ball might work for you. Sometimes little bigger balls are better because you can really get into the area a little more. So we're not just working the front of our body, we're working the, the side also of our body, trying to open up in all that space where the rib cage is. The rib cage, you know, we're three dimensional beings, right? It's, we got the front, the sides, the back. So what you could do, you could go on the back and just roll back and forth. What I like to do is actually a tennis ball on my back. So I put it down, I roll back and forth. And I will show you how to do this in standing. Just like that. If it's too hard on your neck, just hold your neck, rub it back and forth. Or what you could do is you can lie in bed, just take two balls, put them in a sock, and then you can just place them on one area and just rest into them and then move it up, rest into them. I do that sometimes too, especially in my low back even. But I also can, you also might want to do it up here because this is easy that you know, knots, every, so many people have knots and tension in their shoulders, so you can just rest it on your shoulder like that. Just let it rest and as your body gets heavier and sinks into that. Then take that ball again and we're going to do the other side. So this is what it looks like on the back. All the way around and then we're going to get the sides. So you're kind of just rolling around. You want to get up by that shoulder blade area. Muscles around there. And then you see how that feels. All right, so in standing, you can either use the ball or the tennis ball. It's a little easier using um, a slightly bigger ball in standing, but you're just going to put it, what you're going to be doing is putting it right there and using the wall to kind of push it back on you. You're going to use the wall to push it back on you and kind of move it, kind of like what we did when we were lying down. And I'm going to do it right in the corner. And you're just going to move back and forth. Try that and see how that feels. So you're getting like the top, upper chest, even the side. Okay, and then you want to do the other side. You can yourself up. Tennis ball. You could use the tennis ball. It's a little harder versus that ball is a little easier to stay in position, but you do the same thing. So you put it here and you roll it. You might like the, uh, the feel better than one or the other. This is easier to kind of pop out, but I've got it. Or you can just hold the ball and you roll your body, you move your body back and forth on it. The other thing for the back is you put it up, you're going to put it on the wall and you just kind of move up and down on the wall like this. And that can feel really good on the back, the upper back. And you kind of got to go over the rib cage a little or use the bigger ball if that's more comfortable. You know, it's just a whole idea of just relaxing all the muscles around that rib cage so we can expand that rib cage even more when we breathe. Feeling that we can get more of a breath in, which is a great feeling, right? All right, so after we finished it, we, you know, we didn't spend too much time in each one, but 
just notice how you feel. Like, I feel like I can open my chest more. I almost feel like my body is cueing me to remind me, oh wait, open up that chest more. Okay, so let's just roll up our shoulders and down, set them down our back. Feeling that chest open now. Now the trick is you can put your elbows into the side, 90 degree angle, your elbows are bent, and bring these arms out like this and squeeze your shoulder blades together. Taking a breath in and out. Back. You could do this like five, 10 times, it's a great exercise. But it's a nice way to remind us to finish off, giving us that cue of opening the chest. And even notice now I feel even more like my back is getting activated and kicking in to help keep my chest open, which is so important. It's just not about opening the front, it's about having, you know, incorporating our muscles to help help hold ourselves open as well. It's not just relaxing here, it's also helping our muscles be activated to hold us in the correct posture that's best for us, that's easier for breathing. All right, you guys, I hope you find these exercises hat, um, or these poses helpful to you. Stay in them for five minutes, 10 minutes. You know, try to find a ball somewhere. You can even get a little ball at CVS, really cheap in the kids section, and try it out if you're interested in trying out the, the massage. It feels really good. You can use it on your hamstrings, your calves. Um, might even be good for helping to move that blood back up from our calves. Okay, so I hope you have a wonderful restorative day since that's the theme of these poses. I'm wishing you a restorative day. Take care everyone.